Thank you so much for joining us for another in our series of Story to Tell. Today we have with us a very special guest, Mrs. Nardia Thomas, and she'll be sharing her journey with us. Hi, Nardia. Hello, Lestine. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Good. Just a little nervous. <laughs> um, I hope as we go along, it will improve. Tell me, where were you born and what year? Right. So I was born on June 20th. The birth certificate says June 20th, but my mother says June 21st. And we have had several of those stories in Jamaica, all right? <laughs> Some people, yes. the year is different. Um, 1971. I, um, I was born downtown, close to Pentab, Romlin, Smithley, that type of, that area. That's where I was born and that's where I grew up. Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Hospital. Okay. So how much other siblings your parents have? And by the way, tell us your parents' name as well. Right. So my mother, who is now deceased, Vita Sonia Rookwood. My father is Keith Tom, um, Thomas. That's a different story, you know, with just like some other persons kind of didn't accept me until years after. Okay. Right. And I have um, just seven of us. My one of two of my brothers died. One died when he was a year old. The other died at 16. And the okay. others, uh, right. So I have one brother left who is Courtney. A lot of you know Courtney Paul. I yeah. still call him Baby Bro. <laughs> he lives in England, London, England. So we yes. see when we call him, right. My other siblings are my sisters, Pet, Pam, Paula. Mm -hmm. So how much are you actually grow up together? Right. The one who, right. who were the mm -hmm. Right. All the others grow up, except the middle, well, the second girl. Her, she, mm -hmm. we have the same father. So her grandmother, you know, which is my grandmother too, but years after before she acknowledged that. Yes. And, and right. So she took her because she was from, you know, more affluent area. So her grand picnic can grow up down a town. So she took her. But she would visit, you know, like holidays, she would visit. And she wanted to really stay with us because, you know, she missed her siblings. When she come, she'd have more fun. Okay, you know, downtown, we would we would be outside a lot, having fun, play at church, play at Dolly House, cook pot, you know, run, run boat. So she enjoyed being with us. But her grandmother took her so she didn't want her growing with us downtown. Okay. Okay. So what school you went to? I'm seeing that you live in Rumlin, um, Calabar, all it would have been close. Right, that's right. So that's so the went, Yeah, I went to one known as um, a basic school first, Barbara Manley Basic School. That was down Gold Street, down South. Yes. I remember the first day, I cried all day. I don't know if I learned nothing. I remember that much. Cry whole day. <laughs> but then after that, I went to Calabar. It was it was kind of our June infant primary and junior high, so I went to grade um, seven Calabar, and from Calabar Kinson Tech, as you said, close, which was which is was was, right. So yeah. I didn't take up bus to school none of my um, years school until years, yeah. college, yeah. Just walk so since, school, walk from home. Yes. So since you could walk to school and walk from home from from the start going to school, you come home for lunch or or you didn't bother do that. Right. When I went to, to Calabar, they would let us out for lunch. Years after they stopped it, you know, in crime and things. So I would go yes. home for lunch. And that was a that was a delight. And many of my yes. friends would they would order lunch from my mother. She would cook lunch and sell them. Yes, because they love my lunch. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we would go home, eat lunch, and then go back to school. Mm -hmm. So how were you um at Calabar College? Um were you a friendly type person, had a lot of friends, or you just kept yourself to yourself? Just a few friends, you know. I always look for girls who kind of, you know, their their focus was close to mine. Christian friends. I remember Sophia Stevens was one of my friends. 
you know, Lisa and you know, the Stevens sisters, Sophia Stevens, that was one of my close friends. I had a few other friends that would come home. And when they come, you know, sometimes they would come after school. We couldn't go to anybody's house, but they could come to my house. My mother yeah. would show up my dinner, cut it in half. If a two of them come, we dinner less. So when they said yeah. I would come with me, I wasn't too happy. But they come. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, she would take even uniform blouse and give to them. So we have less blouse. I had to wash during the week. That's how mm-hmm. kind she was. Yes. Okay. I hear you said you um Christian friends. So from that age, you were going to church. Your parents were Christians as well. No, my mother was never a Christian. But um her best friend, Sonia. My mother's middle name is Sonia, and her best friend's name is Sonia, Sonia Parrish. She, um, she went to Wyman Street, and she took all, a lot of the children from the community. She took us to church. I was um, eight years old when I went to Wyman Street first, and I got the Holy Ghost, you know, weeks after and was baptized. Okay, so that's the, yeah. that's the church that you went to um, growing yeah. up. Right. Seeing that it is so close to home, you could just walk to church and walk back home. That's right. Okay. So while at Calabar um all age, did you um have any best friends or you, you just have a lot of close friends as you said who had um light mindedness as you? Right. I would say close, but if any best it would have been Sophia Stevens. Sophia Stevens. Mm-hmm. Okay. So after Calabar you said you move on to Kingston Technical, so that's now high school. How was right. that transition? Um, getting used to that different environment. Right. Kinson Tech, as you said, different. Girls would come from all over. Some from the, the community, some as far as uptown, because that was one of the, you know, top-rated technical schools. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it, um, yeah, as I said, that was only top-rated technical school. It was good. My high school years were good. There were like two other um, young men from Pentab who we had classes together. I remember Sean Walters' brother, Nathan. Nathan Walters was in my class at one time. And another one, I forgot his name. Okay. So I know back in those days, um, the technical schools were, to me, of a higher quality, higher standard than they are now. Um, someone even once mentioned, if you leave from a technical school back in those days, it's like you could go straight into the world of work into that technical era that you, you chose. Is it that you were interested in any of those technical eras? To be honest, at first I was. I did business, accounts, POB, principal business, but that wasn't really my heart's desire. From a little girl, I always my ambition was always to be a teacher. Always. Okay. I would teach I would teach the the um like the things on the dresser. The powder, I would teach them, you know. So is it that um, any of your family members were teachers or is it that a particular teacher left an indelible mark on your life and you said, you know, this is something I think I could do or you get drawn to that here? Right, definitely. Um, the then principal of Calabar, Mr. Raymond Monroe, he was like a father figure. I remember one, my mother would, she was a seller at the school gate. And he saw me there, like she said, stay here, let me run, go home for something like sock, sock or something. And when he saw me, oh my God, I could sink to the ground because I, I felt the pain being, you know, staying at the stall because he always tried to push us. And he said, you know, to come out like your parents, because most of our parents yes. live in the city, you know that. Yes. So when he saw me, I said, Lord, me dead now. But he said nothing to me, but he, he um, chastised my mother. She told when she came home, she said, Mimi, now I leave you at the start again. Because it was just like, you know, if it's here, that's so. I call it you, I go. So, Mr. Monroe, he believed in me. When I, um, these days you have like career day, we didn't have that. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know you had to send your application the year before for Teachers College. So, I didn't know. Yeah. So he's the one who, after I left Kinson Tech, he said, what do you want to do? And he's still teaching. I said, yes, sir, but the teacher's college are closed. Applications are closed. So I said, all right, I'm going to send it to Art. He got me the application. He filled them out, told me who to go to. And then I worked for a year and then transitioned to teacher's college. So definitely Raymond Monroe left an indelible mark. He was one of the best teachers ever. Okay, so sending a shout out there to Mr. Monroe. You know, if he's still at, at the school or he's probably retired now? He is retired. We talk a lot. We still communicate. 
she, okay, she calls me good. my daughter. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So, what courses did you you do at at Hart for that year? Right. So I didn't really, it's the on the job training that I did. I didn't do any courses. So I went okay. to St. Andrew Prep School. I was an assistant teacher for one year. Oh, okay. So you got some, some training under your belt. Right. And that implemented it more that, you know, this is something that I would like. Definitely. Even the teacher okay. who I worked with, she said, as soon as the year is finished, teacher's college for you. Yes. Yes. Because she saw the potential in you. So which right. one of the teachers' colleges you eventually went to? The prestigious Shortwood, the one that your wife went to, yes. Well, that, is, that is true. That is true. The prestigious Shortwood. <laughs> <laughs> kind of outside of the city, you know? Yes. I, I needed that. Yes. I needed that because being downtown all my years, I said, wow, somewhere else existed. I, I was happy for that. Mm -hmm. So you you had to take the, the, the bus um in the evenings and and go up or you just went full time. Oh that went up. Right. So those days if you lived in town, I'm not sure if they changed, they would not let you um live on campus. Residency mm -hmm. was only for the, the, the girls who were out of out of town, you know, different parishes. But I went to the guidance counselor, I wrote a very strong letter. Pray over the letter, you know. And she said, you're going to be the first, the first Kingstonian to live on campus. Mm. That's best yes, because I, I wrote in it, the gunshot at night, which is a true, you know, the small space to study. I didn't have any little space to study, really. When, the, when if yes. I keep the light on there, my sisters couldn't sleep. You know, just a little passage yes. I had to study. And they waived it. And I was the first Kingstonian to be a resident at Shortwood, to live on campus. Okay, that's very good. That's very good. So how was life living on campus? That was a wake up call. My goodness. <laughs> I didn't know. At first, you would have been kind of living on your own. So this Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that we had so many different personalities. Some of those girls, my goodness. One of my roommate was, um, I'm not throwing any, you know, like, Stone at anybody, but she her name. Her name. Oh, you know, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. But she was a Sabbath keeper. And I said to her, I said, if I didn't know God, I would never serve God that you serve. Because during the week, yes. horrible. And then Friday night, when her parents came for her, a different girl. She was a, she was a PK. Oh, so she was living two, two lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe she was still finding her putting, you know? Um, right. I pray for her right. know that, you know? She she changed, and a lot of um students who go to colleges end up having that little identity crisis during that period. So I understand exactly what you're saying, but if you if you remain focused and keep the Lord in front, you can do it and maintain it. You can do it, yeah, right. You can do it, but it was rough. I saw yes. and heard some things that I said I I didn't want to hear, but I heard them. You know, mm -hmm. I see them. It was only girls living on campus at that time, but no, I think they changed. Yes. So how, how did you manage to cover the, the tuition fees for your, your college? Right. So as I said, my mom would sell at the school, but in the evening, she would go to one of the JPS offices and she would clean the offices. So she got a little extra. During the summer when school closed, she would go to town and sell. And the good thing is, some one of the um, ladies, like the managers at the, one of the JPS offices, which was down um, the south side, she like stuck to my mother one day to see the type of integrity. So she left some money on her desk to test my mother. And yes. my mother came over and she tell her, she said, you know what, she leaves so much money like she take their teeth, you know. And my mother cleaned it away and she cleaned it away and she just leave it right there. She put something on it so it blew away. You follow me? So yes. nobody can say it blew away. But she was the yeah. only person who had access to that office. And yeah. because of that, the lady gave me summer jobs, so two summers. So I would work yeah. at JPS. And that summer money was JPS pay good. But yes. I, got, I, I used those summer money and went to teacher's college. I didn't do student loan. My mother would cook. Um, she would cook my meals, like four different meals on a Sunday. And I would take them to college, freeze them and eat them, you know, daily. And then there was a time on campus where they gave us like some funds. We had like a hot, uh, like a, a, a 
um, what do you call it, like a cafeteria or a yes. pantry we would go to and we would get food. But, but it was rough, but that's how I went through, just humble with what I had, you know. Mm -hmm. But I didn't so, have to borrow student loan. Wow, that is that is remarkable because a lot of yeah. persons through the the um the student loan yeah. route. So your mother basically working multiple jobs and, and you with your summer job help to balance off the fees. Right. And my sister, my oldest sibling, she um she would help a lot too. A lot of my clothes, she would make my clothes because short would then we didn't wear we uniform. So we had to find our own clothes. So she would make yes. some nice clothes. My big sister pet, she was a dressmaker. She's a teacher now. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, the family has two teachers. Yes. <laughs> okay. So after you left um, Shortwood, um, what did you specialize in? Is it primary education? Right. Primary education. So you went straight into a, a primary school. What was your first job now? Officially right, my that. first job was St. Aloysius. I went to grade three first. You went to grade three. So how, mm -hmm. how was that first year into the actual teaching environment? No. A wake-up call. <laughs> a lot of what they, they would teach at teachers' college, when they come to the real world, they have to throw some, most of them through the door and face yes. the reality. The reality and is, you. and adjust. They have to be flexible. And what I would do is, um, you know, those classrooms, they would have like partitions. So I would listen to the experienced teachers and model. Mm -hmm. And I had some good teachers that I that I were uh, beside. Like three of us were in the same kind of room, just the, the chalkboard would separate us. Mm -hmm. And I would listen to how they teach and I would model. And they were excellent teachers. Yes. Um, I, we have uh, mentioned your mom quite a lot, but I know she was killed um, sometime in your growing up years. Um, tell us about when was that that she was killed and the circumstances surrounding all of that? Right. That was a very dark period for me. That was in 2000. She was murdered. Um, she lived in Portland. Her mother um, came from England, built a home. It wasn't finished, finished, but, you know, most of it was finished. Two-bedroom. She and my um, youngest sister lived together there. And she would do pimento. She would let people come and work with her. Pick pimento. They make, you know, it wasn't a lot, but they made some good funds. You know, pimento, you have a season. And one yes. of the persons who worked with her came back one night, molested my sister, and God helped her. She ran away, but then he held my mother, robbed her, strangled her. That's a sad thing that happened. Yeah, 2000. So it was someone she, she no one worked with. Mm -hmm. We all wow. knew him. So in two thousand, how would have you would you find out about that? Um, seeing that she's living in the country and you're in town, you had cell phones back then. Or... right, cell phone. You know the big we call the fridge phone name. That was in. <laughs> yes, that was in. But she didn't have no internet at the time. But I God showed me everything in a dream the same night. I saw everything. I saw where her body was. I couldn't get to her in time, but I knew something was going to happen. I pray and I cry. And when the phone call came in the morning from the police, the police didn't even try to break it. You know, a mild way. They say, yeah. blah, blah, kill your mother, murder your mother. That's how he told us. And my big Just sister fainted. Like that. Just like that. <laughs> and my big sister fainted. I said, you know, so I try to you know, revive her. I didn't cry until after the funeral. I didn't yeah. cry until the funeral. So my brother, um, yeah, Paul was a teenager at the time. He was 14 at Kingston. Yeah. We yes. had to go, go to school and take him out. And once he saw us, he knew something was wrong. He laid on in the street. He holla, he holla, he holla. It was horrible. Yes. It was horrible. Okay, so basically you would say it's uh, it's a robbery gone bad that that caused caused that um that killing mm -hmm. that the police theorized yes okay so did you did they ever catch up with that with that guy was he um charged and held accountable for his action right he was charged but he only did 15 years because he behaved himself in prison and let him out how much did he originally get 
I think it was like 22 or something like that. Okay, but the, but early, say, early, yeah, powerful for good behavior, and they right. let him out. Right. Okay. So, um, contrast how you you felt at that time towards him in the moment, the funeral and everything, to how you are now. Um, let me know your state of mind back then versus now, and how you know end up reaching this point if there's any change. Right. I remember once, you know, when we went to um two forty five prayer meeting, it was who's now Pastor George King. He said, Did you know that any one of us can commit murder? And he said, No, we would never do that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And he said, Without God, we will do it. Then if I saw him, I would give him back the same meat that he gave to my mother. That's how I felt. Mm -hmm. You know, with time and learning about forgiveness. I have watched videos on forgiveness, you know. I realized that, uh, I think it was T.D. Jakes who said it, that unforgiveness is like you wanting someone to die, but you are the person drinking the poison. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I was for quite a while. I wanted mm -hmm. him to die, but I am the one who was suffering, you know, my heart feeling heavy. You ask her to forgive you, but then something keep reminding me, have you forgiven him? Yes. But today, thanks be to God, I can say, I don't remember what year it happened. Because it took a while. But I, I have forgiven him. I okay. have forgiven him. I pray that, you know, he would find God and I wouldn't kill his body again. So it take a few years, probably more than 10 years, for you to reach that place? Probably not so long. Probably three so long. or four. Okay, within three to five year range. Mm -hmm. So hope. What, what is one of the, the, the signs that you can truly know if you are forgiven somebody? When you hear their name, it's like there's no little gap in your heart, like a little hmm, a little something in your heart. I don't remember his name, to be honest. But if I see him, I would say that's the person who killed my mother. I would talk to him and ask him why and, you know, why? Why I had to kill her? Yes. I would tell him if you knew. And with him, um, no, probably you would invite him over for dinner and probably have a little chit chat and find out what <laughs> went down. <laughs> Not at my house, sorry. <laughs> I would meet him at a restaurant. <laughs> okay, at, <laughs> at, at a public him. place. A public place. <laughs> yeah. I don't know his heart. You think mm -hmm. one he might want to the other. Our feast, I may have something mm -hmm. up a sleeve. So I would meet him, you know, and I would pay for the dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would I pay you. for the dinner, but still ask him why. Yes. And I would tell him that I forgive him. How did it affect your, your other siblings um, after the funeral when it actually set in? Did they have struggled getting over it or eventually? They, they did. Some institution came to the house because my siblings were teenagers and they put them on to um, counseling. My mm -hmm. sister started, but she didn't continue because it was hard yes. to find bus fear to center. It was somewhere like in um, Cross Road and we lived downtown. It was hard. So she started yes. the counseling, but she did not continue. Paul should have gone, to, but he didn't, he didn't go. Mm -hmm. It took, um, I don't know their heart because we don't discuss with, you know, him. We just yes. leave it. You know, discuss him, but it was difficult for years. Difficult for like about two Mother's Day after that, I didn't go to Mother's Day services. Yes, I couldn't manage. I put on my clothes and I couldn't go. Right. Mm -hmm. But when I became a mother, one Mother's Day, my husband said, "I have to try. God is good to you. You're a mother now. You know, go and celebrate." And that year, sobbing, sobbing, right to church, I went. I went. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, ever so since. Okay, so that's a perfect segue now. Um, I hear you mentioned in your husband uh, and <laughs> Tell us how you met your husband and, and walk us through that little section of your life. All right, that's a happy time and still is. Thanks be to God. So out of my mother's death, there's a teacher um, who gave me a clipping from the observer. Then I didn't read Observer, really. I always buy the Gleena every every mm -hmm. Sunday, the Gleena, and I would read the Gleena, you know, 
fine tooth comb, clean it up, the cleaner, the cleaner. But she cut it out and she said, you're young and you have your siblings to take care of. Here's a teaching opportunity in the Cayman Islands. She said, try it. Mm -hmm. I said, you can't need them. She said, you need the help with them, try it. So I applied and I was um, selected. And I went to Cayman Islands. So one day I was at the bank, me and another teacher, who was another Jamaican. So I went to the bank and he, I saw him calling me. So I said to the teacher, joking, let me say, what do you mean? My husband is in let me fix my bag. And I pulled my bag. To the yes, I said that. <laughs> and I pulled my bag from over my shoulder, put it over my arm like this way. And I stepped like hot girl, I go down, you know. So what yes. me, me reached him, he said, hello. Like I said, where are you coming from? You know, the kind of way, say hello. Yes. He said, where are you from Wyman Street? So I feel a little more relaxed. I said, okay. So I said, tell me my name. But I don't remember him. I don't know him. But yes. he said he used to be at Wyman Street. But then he started going to Reverend Phoebe's church because it is closer to his, his home. But he told yes. my name, so I made up on the choir and everything, you know. <clears throat> and then we parted ways. Mm -hmm. And then I had um, like an emergency surgery to do my appendix. That's a story to be told by itself. <laughs> yeah. If you talk about spiritual attack, that was that day. Anyhow, yeah. I did the um, the surgery. Um, then I, I didn't want to be by myself again because I was living by myself. So one of the teachers who is a Jamaican, she said, why don't you share apartment with me since you're still healing? And I said, all right, because I really didn't want to go back to that apartment because of what I encountered. So yeah. I went to stay with her and her parking spot, two, par two parking spots. But at the time, somebody else was using one of them. So I had to, she said, borrow my neighbor's man because then the fussy. When the person yeah. got me, they carried over to you or so. So when I went to the parking spot, his curtain was drawn. It was a glass, his apartment. When I looked through who I saw. You see, man? You see, man. <laughs> so I lived at number four. He was at number two. He said, look at God. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I thought. I said, this is very strategic. Yes. And, you know, he would cook and bring over soup every stuff if he had a teacher. And all that good stuff. So this was still in Cayman? Yeah, that's in Cayman where I met him. So I met him in Cayman. I got married in Cayman. I invited yeah. some Jamaica who could afford to call. My siblings all came to Cayman. Yeah. Brother Neville, Minister Neville Richards was my giveaway father. He came to Cayman. Oh, no, <laughs> tell us your thoughts on all the soup and everything. So, <laughs> is this soup that got a hole of you or something? Tell us yes, how you yes, actually yes. had that confirmation that this person could actually be a good um, choice of a husband. Right. I didn't get no vision, no dream. I mean, I tell no life oh, of God. I got none of that. Mm -mm. Yes. But just his character. And um, years ago, I wrote down what I was looking for in a husband. You know, Jeremiah said, write it down and make it plain. So I had, a, I had a diary and I write it down. I said, I want him to love God. That was the first one. I wanted to be a worshiper because I love to worship. And I said, you must be tall, dark, and handsome. Them that did upon the list, you know, they see it. Yes, man. Yes. Yeah, I, can't yeah. I can't leave off them, the man. Your wife never leave off some of them things I see, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I checked the list one one. To, um, mm -hmm. he when he when he proposed to me, to be honest, tragedy took place with um a friend. Uh, yes. I call her name Edwina, but I won't go into her situation. Edwina, yes. we lost Edwina. So during yes. that period, he had asked me, and I was grieving at what happened to Edwina, because when I got through for Cayman, I also got through for New York and England, but I went to a camp. I was an um, assistant commissioner for Jamaica for Girl Guides, and yes. I went to that camp. And while at that camp, no, I have the three options. I call my auntie in England, but there was something in the contract I didn't like, so I canceled England. Like they said, if it don't work, you don't get paid. Like no sick leave thing. Yes. I said, no, my auntie yes. said, mm, if you're cold, you must catch cold on that time or flu. So I yes. canceled England, but then I had New York because they have a best friend there at the time, you know. And I had my yes. auntie in New York. Two of them I set up place to me. So I said, New York it is, you know. And then at that camp, I had a vision. I saw this lady. She said, Tell me your name. My name is blah, blah. 
and I'm here to take you to the Cayman Islands. So that's how I made that choice to go to Cayman, right? So it wasn't just, it wasn't coincident. I, I, I prayed about it and God showed me in a, in a vision, go take the Cayman one, even though I knew nothing about Cayman. I studied history at university. I could label the whole Caribbean. I could, I could label the globe. That's how much because yes. I did social studies. I was good at labeling all the maps. I could tell you every little dot. I never see Cayman and no map. I never see it. Yes. So prior to that oh. thing, a small battle uh, that you call that, you know? Yeah. I did know about Cayman. It's the truth. I never see that country on the map. So I said, Cayman, but I obeyed through that vision and went to Cayman. So that's how um, the, the, I know it was God who orchestrated it. So the, the teacher was shared with, she said to me, she said, I true me I'm seeing you know, because from his semen, I'm saying, what a handsome young man. That's what she told me. She said, me that yes. before you, you know, I said, but me in a race with you, we're going to have for me to me. But, you know, yes. he was a very kind, humble. If you talk yeah. about somebody who's humble, that's Leo. But because of what happened to Edwina, he proposed to me like January. And I said, I cannot give you a response because me don't want nobody to kill me. That's what I told him. And with what yeah. happened a year before my mother, because I got married, um, you know, 2002, what happened to my mother, I didn't. You know, I was a little cautious, you know, still hurting a bit. And mm -hmm. then, um, he, but he showed, he said, I'm not Edwina. I'm not that person. You have to get to yeah. know me. I said, all right, but give me some time. And I remember going to New York. I mean, I share what happened to, with, you know, about him with my friends and her husband, Robert Mayhew. Robert said, from all the way in Lisbon, Leo the Lion, I think you should say yes. I said, just his name alone make you smile. So I did take some time and then. That was on Easter break. When I went back, I said to him, I said, remember that question you asked me, January? The answer is yes. He said, which question? Like, he, he couldn't, he never remember. <laughs> yes. He said, which question? And then he remember, and he lifted me up and spin me around. And that was, that was yes. the yes. Three months after being asked, will you marry me? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so pick up back now. You're saying, brother Neville and who came up and everybody. Who, who got you with that part now? So you invited them up? You're right. I asked Brother Neville because I didn't have a father mm. um, to come. Brother Neville, oh my God. He, he jumped on it. He said yes. He paid his own way. Hotel. Everything. So Brother Neville came. Gillian Campbell. You know my close friends are those who could afford it at the time. They came. All my siblings came. And his mother and sister and stuff. Siblings came. So I got married in Cayman. Yeah, that kind of helped me a bit. Because being, not being in Jamaica, I didn't have to say I'm missing my mother because she's not there in my head. She, she can't make it in Jamaica. That's how I put it. Mm -hmm. So we got married in Cayman. Okay. Um, we didn't get the name, though. Who you got married to? We didn't get the oh, name. Oh, Leo George Thomas. Leo the Lion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. And uh, how long after you had, you had children? I know you have right. two children now. Not, yeah, two. I got pregnant on my honeymoon. Yeah. On my honeymoon. Yes, sir. I yeah. said, my mother told me that. She said, you cannot take uh, contraceptive and plan for a family that you don't even know if, if it's God's will. Because some of those things damage you as a woman. And I've seen yeah. it. And I've read about it. So I didn't take yeah. nothing. And I got pregnant yes. on my honeymoon. I heard like a comment, you know, like from some of the people in the church. Even the pastor wife came to me one Saturday. She said, I always yes. wanted babies like you and to get have babies quickly. But I, I mess up myself by taking contraceptive. But somebody told me you're pregnant. Whenever I'm telling about it, I'm pregnant. You know, when the doctor yes. told me, I said, pregnant. But Leo, let me tell you. Leo told me I was pregnant one morning. I was cleaning. And Leo said, you're pregnant. He said, me pregnant? He said, oh, you know that? He told me. Yeah, for, for Tijene. But he didn't tell him for Tijan. For Tijan, we didn't know. Yes. But so he told me I was pregnant. Tijan. Yeah. So he's a good boy. Right. Perfect pair. Perfect pair. Perfect pair. <laughs> okay. So um, you have your two children now. How is, how is life now as a mother, growing them up and everything? No manual comes with being a mother. That's another thing by itself, you know? I just tried my best. Things, mistake that I saw my mother made, I try not to make them. Like, beat, beat too much. 
my yes. mother, her method of um, punishment for if you do something wrong, she would line up everybody from the eldest to the smallest, and she everybody. So if my big sister does something wrong, the whole of me get you. I met yeah. even one other person who told me their mother did that too. So I said, mm, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> she lined up everybody. But I, I believe in beating them with them. One time a son said, when we came here, it was called social service. Mr. said, social who? Mr. said, I would take it back to Jamaica and beat her right down the saw in a custom yes. and then just take back the next flight, come up. That's what I told him. So he never play again. He never run that risk again. But because you hear children talk about that school. I said, look at yes. where Jamaica, you know, follow them. We come mm -hmm. here to get what God has for us. He said, you trying to follow them. He said, maybe beat you. I, I don't, yes. At the airport and then take back the next flight. So That's how much years apart are the two kids? Four years. Tijane is years. Um, 20 and Tijan is 16. 16 now. So they were born in Cayman then, right? No, no, are no. You no. Cayman. Tell us thank about you. that part. Yes, thank you for asking. I believe my children must be born where I was born. Yes. Part of me wanted to say go private, you know, because sometimes, you know, through some good things. Um, you know, but Jillian Campbell, you know, nurse Jillian. Jillian said, Look, yes. if something goes wrong, you know, then private business, a straight down back a public, they're going to carry you. But yes. I wanted my children to be born in Jamaica. I, I came up here and I remember shopping for Tijani. I couldn't find out the sex of the child. And then again, I prayed. God always show me things in a dream, vision, because I'm young, you know. And I saw the little girl, just like how oh, she is. I mean, just start by peer dress and things and things. But they were both born Victoria Jubilee Hospital. I did private prenatal care, but me come down in time and gave birth yes. at Victoria Jubilee Hospital. To them. So both and were then, born in Jamaica. Yes, were... that means a lot to me. I want them to okay. be born in Jamaica. So um, how long did you stay in Cayman and then, and then you just transitioned back to Jamaica or you went back over? Right, so I did seven years. Mm -hmm. my, my spirit just get troubled because of some, yeah, my spirit just get troubled. And I remember it was July 2008. School, it was July 4th, I remember that date specifically. I just heard, wasn't audibly, but in my spirit, go back home. But I was telling my husband, you know, that we just start feeling easy. It's like, I want to go back home. One, I don't want the children getting the education here because Jamaica education is, is we know if they dispute that. There is no debate, the best. So I said Tijane was um, three plus and Tijane wasn't even a year old yet. And I, we went back. My husband agreed, you know, and we went back. Just pack up and go back home. Uh -huh. yeah, 2008. So you came back and, and went teaching in another school in Jamaica? Right. I went to my alma mater, Calabar Infant yeah. Primary and Junior High. And Mr. Monroe was still the principal. So of course. Wow. Yes, sir. So reunited. Yeah. Reunited. Oh, Lord. You walk with your head up the sky, sir. This is my daughter. My daughter, that. My daughter, that. My daughter, that. My daughter, that. As a visitor, come at the school and carried it to me. We don't get yes. to breed in a piece. <laughs> Lord it was, my, my, delight. It was yes. my delight to go back to my alma mater. And the children say, you come back alma mater? I said, me see him one. Yes. I remember yes. last one morning, there was this um, young man, because I grew up in the community, so they know me. They said, Sally Gal, Sally Gata. So, and saying Sally Gal, they didn't mean it in a disrespectful way, you know, just to show that it's yes. Sally coming from Sally's loin. So, he, he yes. ride the bicycle with me. The man said, he said, you know, so I know me can't believe, say, you really come back. Can teach them, yeah. He ride the bicycle go straight to my classroom door. He said, No, sir, you never believed that God before me know God real. You come out here and you come back. He was he was in awe. He ride the bicycle, yes. he said, straight to my classroom door. I wasn't driving at the time. Already yes. got to go by. So me don't walk, but I was walking. Yes. As I drove. Yeah, I drove. But I, I was just walking that morning. For some reason we go buy something and I come back. But he ride the yes. bicycle go straight in. He could not yes. believe I came back. The sellers were some of the same sellers that were there when I went to school. My oh. mother's best friend was there. They were they were happy to welcome me. So how long you stayed 
at your school and before you moved on to another opportunity? Right. I did 10 years at Calabar. Wow. Yes, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then God opened the door to come here in North Carolina. Okay, so you're now in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, you're teaching as well. How did that opportunity come about? I know the first one, somebody cut out a clipping from the observer. <laughs> did you get that clipping from the cleaner this time? How did I got, that work out? So while in Cayman Islands, I was the head of the um, English department. They have Cayman Theological Institute, a Bible college that the church had. So I was the head of the English department. Um, let me back up on that a little bit. When I went to the church, because I was so broken, I went there like a bird with one wing because of what, yeah. you know, went through my mother. So I was broken. I didn't want to join no choir. I didn't want to do nothing. So I went and creamed my hair because I know the church would not let me sing or do Sunday school because my hair. Yeah. Liberally cream my hair so they would ask me. But the yes. dean of studies, she said, she called me once and she said, we need a head of the department. They were just starting up the college. And you're the yeah. perfect person. Several teachers are here, but we want to choose you. I said, why me? I said, choose somebody. I said, my hair is cream. I said, I don't care about that. Yes. <laughs> That's what she said. She said, I am the dean. I am the one yes. choosing teachers. I don't care about that. So I, yeah. taught, I taught English there to um, persons who did not have um, CXC or GC English. So a lot of them, you know, were household workers and did other, you know, jobs that we would label menial, but they were brilliant. Yes. But one of those students, when I was in Jamaica, one day she called me and she said, um, Miss, you want, you want a teaching job overseas? You know, because one of my friends teaching there, she said, teaching there. the opportunities there. I said, all right, send the link. So that's why I got the link from one of my past students in Cayman who I taught English to. Yes. So that's why I got the link and I applied, prayed about it and applied. And that's how we came here. Okay. So you're now in North Carolina and you're, you're teaching at um, still primary level, right? Right. So how long have you been there and how is that experience? So you're now teaching Jamaica, Cayman Island, and now. North Carolina. Give us um, the differences between all three. Well, you know, Jamaica, the teaching Jamaica, eh, any day, if Prime Minister Andrew Holness would pay me what I get here in U.S., I would teach in Jamaica. Our children are different. Our culture. Trust me. I, I, I felt nostalgic. That's why I went back from Cayman. And there are times that I feel nostalgic again here. And I said, Lord, I owe every child I taught in Jamaica an apology. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're really rough on them. But they're yes. the best. They're the best. It's the truth. Cannot compare. Cayman Islands to Jamaica, no comparison. The U.S. to Jamaica, no comparison. Different culture. So um, here it's different. In my first year, and I'm going to share the good and the bad, right? Because this is a story to tell, right? Yes, that's what in my it is. first year, in my first year, two students, two consecutive weeks, lied on me. So I, I hit them. One boy said me hit him. Which we have lick pitna Jamaica again. You understand? Yes. Lick Jamaica. Years me no lick pitna Jamaica. So I he said in the cafeteria, I wasn't even teaching him, but I co-teach and his teacher wasn't there, so he had a substitute. So the substitute was talking to him and he wants to sit down. He don't want to listen. So I went close to him and I said, sit down. And then they listen. You're going to play with him. You got to be firm, loving, but no, no child is going to be in charge. My, they can never say, I don't have yes. control. None of that. Right? So I spoke to him. So the principal called me and I said to her, you all have cameras here, right? She said, yes. I said, you could run the camera. I said, thank God he said it was a cafeteria and not somewhere private. So she yes. only won the thing. And the principal said, these were exact words, verbatim. I could strangle him. I know I'm like the word strangle, you know. I mean, I like the yes. word strangle. I said, Mom, are you finished now? Because first she said, it's strangle, but just step out. And she said, yes, I'm finished, and I apologize, blah, blah. I mean, I hear nothing more she said, because I just blocked them out. Yes. Right? When she looked at the camera, I wasn't even six feet close to the boy. And she said, yes. she could see me, just point my finger and say, sit down. 
and he listened. Yeah. So the other one now said to some children, I'm going to get Miss Thomas fired, just like that. Mm-hmm. So they will have some, you know, they will have some little things that they will say and they will ask you some questions. You wonder if they, if they think we come from some bush. Like they never yeah. asked me. They've asked some other Jamaicans, like, um, did you take a boat to come here? Because you're black, they think yeah. you come from Africa. So what I do when I meet them, yes, but what I do when I meet them, I educate them. Bring up YouTube for them, the nice Jamaica. You follow me? Yes. The yes, sweet yes. Jamaica. I show them our buildings, songs, everything. So they, then they'll ask me them little silly questions. And I share my experience. I say, I've been in Cayman, I've been to Canada. So they know some of come on a boat. Many of them yes. have never even taken the plane. So I said, you should be happy because they sent for me to educate you so that your scores can grow and you can learn. Mm-hmm. And I said, there's children in Jamaica crying for me right now. So thank God I'm yes. here with you. You know, me tell them straight up. <laughs> but so more that uh, while, while you're in the, the United States teaching, I know you went and did further studies. Tell us about that part. Right. So to God be the glory. Um, in 2000, right now the COVID, COVID came, I remember March 12th, that was the last year yeah. of school. And I mean, prior 20, to that, 2020, 20, yeah, yes, uh, yes. March 12th, 2020, school yes. closed. The children, books are still there. Everybody expects to be out probably on two weeks and go back, but it was shut. Everything shut down. You know that, right? Worldwide, school shut down. So um, one of my friends one day called me and said, since school out, why don't you study some more? We said, you have here, She said, no, man, they have little, you know, like the school will have little, you know, payment plan. The same yeah. day, Justine, I kid you not, the same day, another one called. Me said, Miss said, got to talk to Uno if you me today. This Another one, yeah. you know, she, they were yeah. both doing their masters in one day. But prior to that, I had a dream. I saw myself at a university, whether I was a lecturer or I was presenting, but I was at a university. So I said, it must be God. So I said, I'm think about it. You know, I'm going to talk to Leo. And Leo said, go ahead. Because why not? Mm-hmm. And um, I signed up. And I did the, the program, curriculum and instruction. It should have taken five years to get that doctorate. But with God's help and hard work, I got it in three years. Mm-hmm. So they call me Dr. Thomas now, to God with glory. That's so right. you're now Dr. Thomas. So what are the, the plans that you have um in the in the near future, seeing that you have now moved on to a higher level of learning? Right. With God's help, I plan to become a professor of elementary education. I want to give back to prospective teachers. I want yes. to tell them that if you don't have a passion for teaching, just leave the pit of them alone. Leave them alone. Yes. And yeah. that's the basic message that I want to carry. Share, you know, the successes, share, you know, teaching strategies, some of them based on research, some from my experience, because this is my 28th year teaching. So that's where my passion is, to give back teachers so that, it, you know, education can continue with people having a passion and not being in it because of political stepping stone or because of opportunities. Some teachers come and teach you because of the summers, all kind of stories you hear them. But I want to, you know, tell them, have that passion or leave them alone because you, you're going to be accountable to God at the end of the day. Are there any plans to come back to Jamaica and um, see if you can contribute to the, the um, educational sector here? That would be my delight. From like a policy level. From like a policy, policy level. level. Yes. Right. That would be my delight. They have to pay me. They don't have to pay me some of the big money they take for themselves because I know me still in a shop. You know, me can't, me can't fathom it. What am I for pay me? And, I, and, I, and yeah. I, because of technology, you know, I can work from here and work with the Minister of Education. Yes. Because it would be nice if they really let a teacher help to give back. Because a lot of times, who is the head? They have nothing to do with teaching. And it's sad. Yes. That mess mm-hmm. up our system. And it's the truth. Sometimes they will bring people to come and work, you know, JPS, bring down them head from all kinds of places. Get your own. I'm not the only one here with a doctorate and some information yeah. and things got help. 
What about for PM in a US, Yes. Yeah. PM in a US. I understand. <laughs> yes. You work hard, so you deserve to be compensated accordingly. Yes. Okay, so what does Nardia do in her spare time when she's not teaching? Right, when I'm not teaching, I'm a soccer mom. So you see me on the soccer field today because of thunderstorm and it's not any schedule. To God be the glory. That's the, perf the path my son plans to take. So I'm a soccer mom. I give back to um, always working with, with the kingdom of God because we have to give back our time, treasure, and talent. So like today, I should have been at church um, working on the Easter play with the children. I, I, am, I work with the children department, praise team, the dance team with the children. And I'm on the praise team also, so I go to practices. And um, it doesn't show all the time, but I go to the gym with my son sometimes, you know. <laughs> and of course, I love to read. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I love to read, and I try to read. So my Bible, I write, so I have my hands lent. I love to read the word, and I have, you know, those books that I would read on management and, you know, leadership and all them things. But my Bible's on top. I don't put any book on top of my Bible. Okay, so with, with all the experiences that you have gone through in life, if you could get an opportunity now to go back in time and give your younger self, probably like 12, 13 year old Nardia, give that person a message, what would you give that person? Um, what message would you give that person? Right, that little inner city girl, that time I think we were living at uh, probably Romley, Smithley, and somewhere down there. Yes. I would say, I would look her in the face and I said, Nardia, that dream that you have to be an international teacher, because I always wanted to be an international teacher. I don't want to teach in one country. And mm -hmm. stick to it. God will answer that plan. Plane would fly over our head. You know, we didn't have a, a, a plan to say go to, to the U.S., but my mother would get us our passport. We always have a passport. We changed both mm -hmm. two passports, our three passport in my time before coming here. You know, two. Yes, sir. We always had our passport. I remember, you know, the children would throw their books. I would live on the school campus. A part of the school was a yard until the, the government bought out part of that to extend the school. So some children, like the ninth grade or so, they would throw over the books. They don't want the book them. Once the book's new, I mean, I take the old one. I mean, I like old book with doggies, right? But when the book's new, I would take out the books. So I would say, continue reading those books, Lord, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And keep your focus. Keep God as first. At 12, I remember, I love God so much. I was a worshiper. I love God. I would go to, I would go to 245 at 12. Um, no, not yet. When I went to Kinson Tech, then I started 245 for a meeting. But at 12, I was in love with God. And the things of God. I start to go up the road. Mm -hmm. And I would stay focused on my books, yes. the schoolwork. Okay. That's a good message to, to give to young Nardia back, back then. So as we close, uh, we just want to, you to document um, three personal messages that you would like to leave for your family, immediate family. So that's uh, Leo the Lion. That's what you said, right? <laughs> yes. So, first one message for Leo. Um, <laughs> for the records, a first personal message for your son and also for your daughter as we close out. All right, let me do it in order. Leo the Lion. Leo the Lion, my sweetheart. From the day we got married, you never called me by my name. You always called me baby. Even the children yeah. called me baby at one point. And I said, me and no baby. And mama, so, Leo the Lion, I love you. God placed you in my life for a purpose. And that day when I met you, that day we said yes together, that day when I promised that I would stay by you and you would stay by me, you kept that promise. To God be the glory, I love you. Stay focused and love the children. Just God should, should choose to switch me before you. Love the children, remain a good father. You're a good father and you're a good husband. I love you and God bless you. For Tijane, I would say Princess Thomas. That's why I call you Princess Thomas. Continue being focused. 
you're smart, you're gifted, you're talented. The friends you have in your circle, make sure you they believe in what you believe in. Because as you say in Jamaica, birds of a feather flock together. Choose your friends wisely. Always put God first and remain humble. Princess Thomas. So Tijan, so Tijan, let's trust out your father and your sister. Right? Help them. Keep your focus. Your focus is to be a professional soccer player. We said football. Keep that brace that you have in your hand, that bracelet, that Jamaican bracelet. Play for Jamaica. Don't watch the money. Because the other club that you play for, that will compensate. Go back and play for Jamaica. God let you born in Jamaica for a purpose, son. Play for Jamaica. And as you always do, keep your Bible. You always read your Bible before your game. Stick to it, son, and make the cross on your body. So in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the win. And as I said, your middle name is Atrick, Tijon Atrick Thomas. I love you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for that. Very lovely messages there, leaving for the family. And we will just close with that. So thank you very much, Nadia, for such a wonderful little conversation that we had this morning. I hope you're still not nervous at this point. No, I'm relaxed. You see, I'm at me chat, 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 chat. So I'm nervous no more. We chat more than so we think that chat, you know. <laughs> we said that we would only speak for a few minutes, but um, boy, time fly when you're having fun, eh? Yes. So thank you for spending the time with us, Nardia. Uh, we really appreciate it. And thanks to you, our viewers, for taking the time to um, watch one, one more of our interesting interviews. So until next time, when you join us again for another interesting interview, just want to ask you to keep safe. God bless you. Thank you, Lestine.